Obstructive sleep apnea. It's one of the most common sleep disorders, but it can be treated. Joining us now is Dr. Karen Wirtz from Transformations to uh, Cranial Facial Transformations to tell us more about obstructive sleep apnea and how we treat it. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. being with us. Thank you for having me. So, Doctor, I've I've heard a lot about this because my father actually has it, right. and I know a lot of a lot more people are being diagnosed. Right. What is this? Obstructive sleep apnea is a form of apnea that affects people while they sleep mm -hmm. and really what happens is is it relaxes the muscles of the throat and mm -hmm. actually decreases the size of the airway and so when that happens people may have intermittent breaks in breathing while they're sleeping. That's scary. It is very scary. It, can it be dangerous as well? It can be very dangerous. Some people will stop multiple times through the night. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, they actually, their heart rate drops significantly, their blood pressure increases. And what happens is, is then the body takes over and they awaken abruptly. And then they start gasping and choking for air. So yes, it's scary and it can be dangerous. And I know sometimes people don't even realize that they have it. It might be their, their partner that realizes yes. it. So what are some symptoms that might tell you that you have? obstructive sleep apnea? Well, there are some symptoms that can affect you during the day. Mm -hmm. One thing would be excessive daytime sleepiness. People mm -hmm. will wake up and they'll say, oh, I'm so exhausted. I don't feel like I got a good night of sleep. That's one of them. Another one is uh, people will wake up in the middle of the night and um, not know why they're waking up and mm -hmm. say, well, I'm up. I better go to the bathroom. And really what happens is, is that their airway has closed off. They, they, um, their heart rate drops and then they wake up and then they go, oh, I'm awake. Why am I awake? Um, so there's some other things too. During the daytime, people may not have good concentration, good focus. They may have some memory lapses. Mm -hmm. And so there are things that, um, that they need to be kind of aware of. The main thing is we have sleepy drivers. How many of us are Day in our very car? Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. They'll be in their car and they'll be stopped at a stoplight and they'll fall asleep mm. or they'll be driving and going off the road. So it is a very dangerous condition. It needs to be properly diagnosed, identified, and treated. Yeah, it needs to be treated right away. Absolutely. And so how is it treated? There are a couple of ways to treat it. Number one, you need to have a, an accurate diagnosis. Okay. So if a patient comes to me and I'm the dentist and I do an examination, I may see something that's anatomically blocking the airway. Maybe the tonsils may be enlarged, and maybe that they can't breathe through their nose properly. Hmm. So I send them to their primary care physician, and then they might refer them over to an ENT. And so we want to look at simple things like that that are obstructing. It may be also that um, they have a narrowed airway. They may have, like you were talking about, your dad who, who has a problem. Yeah, and he wears a mask. And he, I've heard yeah. a lot of people doing that, but you're talking about there might be other There other may be things. other reasons, absolutely. People that have type Type 2 diabetes are about 80% mm. more at risk for obstructive sleep apnea. Um, people have risk factors such as being overweight or obese, and what happens is fat deposits into the throat and actually decreases the airway. Oh, wow. So then when you lay down to sleep, the tongue falls back, it further decreases the airway. Mm. So there are many risk factors, and I would recommend that people get a proper diagnosis from either a sleep physician or from their primary care physician. Yeah. And as I was t saying about my dad, I think a lot of other people I've heard of that have this are older gentlemen. Is that who it affects most or can it affect anyone at any age? It can affect anyone at any age. I okay. have pediatric children, uh, pediatrics, really? yeah, with um, airway issues, mostly due to an obstruction due to tonsils or their adenoids. Mm. So I send them to a pediatric sleep specialist. But yes, it can affect anyone at any age. You don't have to be overweight to have it, to have a, a small airway. All right, well, it sounds like uh, something that needs to be treated right away. Look at the symptoms. Look at your partner's symptoms as well. Maybe nudge them into a... Yeah, the snoring. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a, a, it's a sign. It's not a, de a definitive right. that somebody might have one, but the snoring, it, it can actually affect the bed partner and their quality of sleep. You'll both get a better night's sleep. Absolutely. If you give a call. Dr. Karen, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Craniofacial Transformations in Chesapeake and North Carolina. You can uh, contact them at craniofacialtransformations.com or call 252 335-4341. Dr. Ortiz, thanks so much. Hi. Great to see you. Thank you.